Hello students, welcome to statics. I'm Dr. Stewart, and today we're gonna to do an example for friction. This example is example 8.3 coming from Hibbler's statics book. And for those of you who haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to this channel if you want the latest statics videos. In this example, we're asked to determine the angle and normal force if the latter is on the verge of slipping. And we're told that no friction exists at point B. So we need to find the angle and the normal force in if the latter is on the verge of slipping. Now we are given some information. We're told that the mass of the ladder is 10 kilograms and that the coefficient of static friction, this would be at point A, is equal to 0.3. If we look at the diagram of the ladder, we can see that the ladder is four meters tall and that is all the information we're really given. So, Let's go ahead and do what we always do. Let's take this ladder and create a free body diagram, freeing it from its constraints, which are the walls, and replacing those with the reactions. Let's also list out our knowns and unknowns. That's gonna help us to figure out how to solve this problem. For the free body diagram, we can start with just drawing a line and two points for the ladder, and then we can place the dimensional information that we know. Here we're gonna split into two pieces, a two meter part and another two meter part, where in the middle, we apply the weight of the ladder, right? In the centroid and center of mass, it's the weight is equal to the mass times gravity. And we'll consider that as a known. That's something we can calculate uh, very easily, right? The next thing we'll do is we'll get other dimensional information about this structure. We're gonna, it's gonna be important to do that now rather than later. We wanna break this ladder up into its X and Y components, right? It is four meters long and it's at an angle of theta. So if we break up and we wanted to find the uh, uh, opposite component, that component would be four meters times the sine of theta, right? And then uh, if we wanted to find the adjacent side, well, then we would, you know, do the, 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 uh, the adjacent operation. Here we split into two parts, one that is two meters cosine theta, and then another portion that is the, the rest two meters of cosine theta. So those two added together would get us the x side. And these are going to be useful. It's just going to make it easier for us in creating the equations. Um, the next thing we did is we freed the body. We replaced the floor and the walls with their reactions. At point A, we have a normal force from the floor, and then we have a frictional force, Fa, that is preventing the ladder from sliding down, right? And then at point B, we, we said that there's that we were given that no friction exists at point B. So the only unknown we have is a normal force of a ladder against the wall. All right. So after replacing the support with the reactions and looking closely at this diagram, we can see that there are four unknowns that we're going to need to solve for. We need to find the frictional force at A and the normal force at A. We need to find the normal force at B. And we need to find the angle of that ladder. Now, to solve for these four unknowns, we're going to need one extra equation. And that equation is going to come from the friction uh, 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 relationship. In this problem, we're told the ladder is on the verge of slipping. 
That's the instant just before it slips. That means we have a case of impending motion. And the frictional force is equal to the friction coefficient mu s times the normal force n. So this is going to be our extra equation that's going to help us to solve for those four unknowns. So now that we've got this problem set up, let's do what we always do. Let's build out our equations of equilibrium. Let's sum the forces in the y direction. We'll find that those forces are equal to Na minus the weight, which is mass times gravity, equal to zero. Let's sum the forces in the y direction. We'll find that it is the equal to the frictional force Fa minus the normal force B. So Fa minus normal force B. And then let's make one more equation. We'll do a sum of moments equation, and we're going to select point A because most unknowns will cancel out if we select that point. And then we'll figure out what's going to cause moments around point A. Well, the weight is going to have a moment. It's going to cause a sense of rotation that is clockwise, which is negative. And the normal force B is going to cause a sense of rotation that is counterclockwise, which is positive. Since we broke up our triangle, we can very easily find the moment arms for each of those forces. And when we do, we find that the sum of the moments at point A is equal to the normal force B times 4 times sine of theta minus the weight times 2 times cosine of theta equal to 0. All right. So now we have our three equilibrium equations, and then we can add our fourth equation for impending motion, saying that the friction at A is equal to static friction coefficient times a normal force at A. We've got four equations. We've got four unknowns. We can solve this systems of equations. So let's do that. And we'll solve this in the following order. We'll take equation one. We'll plug it in to equation four. We'll plug that into equation two. We'll plug that into equation three. And as we move through those four equations, we'll find that the normal force at A is equal to uh, 98.1 newtons. The normal force at B is equal to 29.4 newtons. And the frictional force at A is 29.43 newtons. That's pretty good. All right. And then if we take the results of that and rearrange and solve equation three, we'll find our final unknown as the angle of the ladder, which is equal to 59.04 degrees. All right, so this is a problem we work through and we solve for what we wanted. We started with analyzing our diagram, creating a free body diagram, putting all the information that we could in it, listing out our knowns and unknowns and thinking through how we might solve this problem, applying our equations of equilibrium, applying that friction equation, and then doing a bit of algebra. Thanks for watching my video. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button. I'll see you in the next example.